pressed to perfectly Voron prints a patterned problem, telling turns up temps, toasted, trusted threads, and pause point permanently prints a pronounced plane. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 190. Let's get into it. Starting off, we got a bad first layer on a Voron 2.4-350 using the base Orca Slicer profile. The user is claiming of a rhythm on that first layer, and while Shakira's hips don't lie, mine often do, and well, it's a shame that this isn't high-impact polystyrene because that joke would make so much more sense. Probably PLA, PETG, or ABS since it is a Voron. We can see she's just a little bit too close. That pattern you see is from the nozzle dragging across things and then material coming out of the side. But this can also be indicative of a nozzle clog. And while according to the user, their Z offset is fine, and I am seeing some random bits of under extrusion, and we don't have a sharp corner here. Which leads me to also say this could be a pressure advance value. It's time to go back Let's retune this Voron. Not that anybody should trust me currently how to tune a Voron. The last time I tried, I ended up with some calamari, unfortunately. Uh, toasted an octopus board. But I would certainly say that we have to look at our first layer. Keep an eye on that gantry. Is that gantry moving a lot during that first layer? If it's not, then let's just add... I don't know, 0.05 millimeter to that first layer offset and see if maybe, just maybe, that fixes it. If it doesn't, I'm going with that you might have a bit of a clog. This one can be a bit of a challenge. Vorons, to their nature, are very customizable, unique machines, right? A Voron is like a Corvette. Every one of them is unique. Ask any Corvette owner. The longer the socks, the wider the new balances, the more unique their Corvette is. And if you think I'm wrong, you can fight me in the comments. <laughs> but if you have any other suggestions other than, let's check that Z offset for sure. Let's make sure that nozzle and extruder is not clogged for whatever reason and make sure the actual tension is down on the extruder as well. Let me know in those comments. This one could be a couple of different things, but my bets, that Z offset. What do y'all think? Speaking of what you guys think, my name is Grant. This is 3D Musketeers, and I always like to hear your feedback. This is Printfix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. Remember, if you do have a print failure that you want us to look at, you can slide into those DMs. You can email us, or our preferred method, you can make a YouTube video, tag us in the description, and we'll show it off in Print Fix Friday and we'll help you get your printers running because the last thing anybody wants are printers that are down and if you don't like downtime either make sure to leave a like and get subscribed and hey support us if you'd like links to all that including links to get some awesome shirts in that description down below the one thing that we don't like is when we're not exactly certain if you can fix the problem let alone how to fix the problem. Next up from Myers Workshop, my Bamboo Lab H2D broke. Let's take a gander. Bad news for my H2D. These two pieces were Ooh. laying on my bed when this print failed, I noticed. Ooh. And it scraped my bed up. Oh. These pieces, this is that wiper, that auto flip flop. Oh, I love that wiper. Completely bent and broken and is missing from there. Not good not good to say the least so we've got an h2d it looks like maybe the print wasn't 100 percent adhering to that first layer it made a bit of a mess the printer ran into it and that wiper ended up being part of what was damaged i love that wiper system on the h2d how the nozzles go up and down like this and then a wiper covers the nozzle that's higher up keep it from oozing. Phenomenal idea on how to deal with ooze control on a dual extruder 3D printer, something that pretty much every other company that I know of has not thought of, and it is very much an Occam's razor thing. The simplest solution is often the easiest. That is a great solution to that problem, but we're finding there might be uh, some small weaknesses in this, with one of those weaknesses being the actual part itself. It's weak. It's a thin piece of metal. It's designed to press up against the nozzle itself so the nozzle doesn't have any oozing. It's a great process. And I mean, the Prusa XL does a very similar thing, but it does it for the docked tool heads on like a rubber little wiper that it docks itself on top of. And it works well in my experience. So I think this would work quite well too. But 
if you're having adhesion issues, which is most likely from a dirty bed, when you're dealing with textured PEI and you don't have adhesion in one little space and it's good everywhere else, pretty much you had a dirty bed. I would have liked to see the machine catch this. The H2D has so many cameras in it, you would think that this could have been caught before the problem actually got as serious as it is. I'm not certain what the actual procedure is for repairing this. It looks quite complicated. And after watching even a little bit of Vector 3D's video, which we'll link to so you guys can take a look at it. Adam from Vector 3D took apart the entire H2D soup to nuts to show you what is inside of it and just Wow, the amount of engineering that Bamboo put into that machine, it is no surprise. Quite frankly, it is a surprise. It is as affordable as it is. It is no surprise that it was above that $2,000 price point. After seeing that video, I always thought the machine was gonna be well worth it. It absolutely proves me that machine has a lot more value than I think that they're selling it for. But while it is more user serviceable than the X1 or the P1 series, I wonder how small little things like this will handle. If you're able to just replace the wiper or if it is a part of a larger component, anyone that deals with buying parts for their cars, whether it's a new car or an old car, knows the assembly problem where you can't just get a particular thing that you need. It's part of an assembly. So you have to buy the entire assembly, even though you need a very specific part. It's either that or you go to a junkyard where you can pick and pull the parts. But given these are relatively new machines, you're probably not going to see a lot of them on eBay that have been torn down and being sold for spare parts. So where does this leave us? Well, it's a great time to test Bamboo's customer service, see where they're at. Maybe they're doing better, maybe they're not. I'm not entirely certain how the tariffs are going to affect companies like Bamboo. They have upped their price points as of many companies, including Polymaker. I think Anycubic and Elegoo are going to be next on this list. But there are a lot of companies that are upping their prices due to the tariffs, and that kind of is what it is. I don't know if that's going to have any impact on their customer service, but only time will tell. So hopefully this was resolved. No one likes to see these problems and especially on realistically a really useful component, right? If you told me that, hey, one of the print heads got damaged, you could only print with one print head. I can still print with one print head. Now I can only print with one print head and can't have any material loaded in the other that is going to be at temperature because it will start to ooze or you will have to do kind of the old school way of keeping it from oozing, which is retract the crap out of it cool that nozzle way down and well unfortunately you will have to deal with the heat up and cool down times as you switch nozzles i don't think the machine itself is ruined but i'd be very curious to know if there are any of those internal checks and things that it could do to determine that that wiper has failed part of bamboo's deal is that their machines are fully interconnected they're aware of what's going on inside the machine i wonder if this is included with it let me know in those comments next up my buddy Joel telling over here with his Sunlu dryer saying it got a little too hot. So from what I can tell, we're looking at a Sunlu E2. I'm not 100% certain, but I do believe this is a Sunlu E2 where Joel is likely playing around with some high temp, maybe carbon fiber nylon, cranked up those temps and sent it. Well, unfortunately, while nylon likes to be very hot, the PC ABS or the ABS or even just the raw PC that the spools often tend to be don't like those temperatures. Before we go pointing fingers and say that Joel did something wrong here, it is important to note that I've noticed issues like this too with my Sunlu S4. When we have rolls of PLA loaded into it, we have it set at 50C, PLA should not get soft and liquidy and it does. So it's likely that the heat coming off of the heater is considerably hotter than what the actual temperature is set to. So you're basically dealing with more of a bang bang situation where it's on or off versus a PID where you're kind of creeping up on that temperature. Maybe this got a little too hot, went a little too far above and well, we have spaghetti filament, but it does thankfully appear the actual filament itself is okay, just the spools themselves are ruined. If you are not going to use these on a machine that uses rollers, you might be okay. You might still be able to set the hole in the spool itself on some sort of spool holding apparatus and it will still spin somewhat freely. It's just gonna look like a flat tire that someone has been driving on for a while. But this brings up an important point, something that 
I've been wanting to do with dryers for a while now, and we're kind of working on getting all that together currently, which is, are dryers actually hitting the temperatures that they're claiming to, and are they potentially overheating your filament? Well, this is either carbon fiber nylon, peak, PEC, ultimate, it is a high temp material for it not to do what happened to the spool there. Is the dryer to blame or are the settings to blame? These are things that are important for us to understand as we look at adding dryers to our shops, at, to our businesses, to even just our hobbies. Nobody wants, especially these expensive spools, but even a cheap $20 spool of PLA to end up looking wrinkled like this because of something that was outside of their control. And I want to make sure that these actual heaters, which are basically just the dryers, have the ability to maintain their chamber temperature as well as we would hope that they can. So if you have a Sunlu E2, fairly certain this is an E2, but if you have one, I'd love to know, has this happened to you as well? Do you believe that this is something caused by the machine or operator error? Operator error could be something to blame. If Joel is lucky, he might be able to take those spools out with, a, with another flat surface, squish it down onto a table with like a piece of granite on the top of it and get the spool back to being relatively okay. At this point, you got nothing to lose, so I say send it. Speaking of Joel, we got Joel one more time here with an interesting issue on his H2D. So he had an H2D which had an AMS2 motor overload error, so it paused. He couldn't find anything wrong. He hit retry. It started back up again, but shifted a bit. Has anyone else with an H2D experienced this? I only have one photo, so I can't tell for sure but it does appear that this is a line that goes all the way around versus an actual layer shift. If it is a line that goes all the way around, I'm pretty certain I know what happened. This is the Bamboo Lab H2D, a machine with a chamber heater. And if you're using the AMS2, you might be using the drying function associated with it as well. A motor overload can happen when a spool is too light, too heavy, gets tangled, gets stuck. The AMSs can be finicky, but boy howdy when they work, are they pretty darn reliable. But because I'm not seeing this same issue on that support there, I'm wondering if maybe this machine has the heated chamber on, or even if it doesn't, did the temperature in the chamber drop? Or did it go up as it was paused and waiting? We noticed this in our Chidi Plus 4, that when the machine sits for even 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, that we see a noticeable line. That's because the part itself is shrinking a little bit, and that layer, when you start up again, gets squished. A little sanding takes care of that problem, but because I don't see it squishing out too much here, it could just be shifted in that Y direction. My best guess here is that it is from the pause itself, that the time that it took for Joel to go back and fix it was the time that the print moved a little bit. Whether that was it slowly letting go, slowly cooling down. There's a bunch of different things, like just being in a warmer chamber can have material start to slowly anneal over time. The H2D being such a highly controlled machine that it is, which we talked about earlier with the Myers Wood Shop, I don't think is easily capable of skipping steps without knowing that it did. But again, watching Vector3D's video, the whole system for it to load filament and then clean the nozzle, that does have the potential to kind of knock things around a little bit. So I'd love to know what you guys think. My initial reaction to this was, oh, it sat there and it cooled down for a little bit. He put the next layer on top of the layer that was already there. And because it was hot versus cold, it expanded a little bit more. And so we see a noticeable line. But when looking at this a little bit more, actually could be in the Y axis. Let me know what you guys think. I'm very interested in these H2Ds because Bamboo clearly put a lot of time, effort, and energy into building it right. But I don't like seeing things like this. This is the kind of thing that I expect out of printers half the price, a quarter of the price, not at this price point. So if you have an H2D, have you experienced this issue? Have you noticed that when you have a motor overload from the AMS2, does it line up perfectly? I know on my X1 Carbon, I can't even tell 95% of the time because it is fully automatic. But every now and then, I do notice it, especially if it's sat there with motor overload, let's say overnight potentially. Last but not least, 
WTH, printing high-speed PLA. What do you call this error? It's Flashforge Adventurer 5, it's the AD5M. I don't even know what to call what is going on here. Let's take a look. It's in a book. So we got a cone. I think this is a landing gear for a quadcopter and we've got under extrusion very heavily. This is likely due to heat creep. Heat creep is very common, especially on small parts like this, where you're not making a lot of movement and you're not printing a lot of material and that filament just tends to sit in that hot zone. When it can expand a little bit, get stuck, and then the extruder gets jammed, it's not able to push it all that well, but every now and then it kind of fixes itself. A great way to solve this issue is to print multiples of these at a time or have some sort of a box or something like that for the machine to make sure that it is moving enough filament through that hot zone. Other thing to check is to make sure that your extruder itself isn't clogged up. Check the gears in that extruder, make sure the teeth are clean. You can use a dental pick or you can use ones like from Harbor Freight that are made for O-rings. They will work phenomenally well, of course, we also recommend the firearm cleaning brushes. You can use the short bristle side. That is really great for cleaning off extruder gear teeth as well. That should solve the problem. If for some reason you are also running too cold, you can look at upping those temperatures as well. High speed PLA is likely not pure PLA and might need higher temps than you're used to. Try running 220, 230, or even 240 if you need it. Not all PLA, is created equal. But what is created equal is the love that we get from our fans, many of which are listed right next to me at the $5 tier. Remember, if you want to support the efforts that we do here on the channel, you can do so by joining for as little as $1 a month. And at the $10 tier, you get to come hang out in our private Discord server, where, among many other things, you get discounts on our merch, which is also linked in that description down below. Don't forget, if you want to check out the rest of the Print Fix Friday series, you can click right below me. And next to that, we'll take a look at what I look like going 155 miles an hour in the UK with Harvey Motorsports. That's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Ask any Corvette owner, the longer the socks, the wider the New Balance is, the more unique their Corvette is. And if you think I'm wrong, you can fight me in the comments. <laughs> The car folks will get that one. Trust me. No, I don't need to explain it. Andrew would tell me that that is unnecessary to explain it. We cut on the button, Grant. Shut up! He's learning the ways of the comedy. Soon there shall be nothing left for me to teach him.